Now, on to copyright. The university has a very good copyright guide that I have linked from your VLA. When you have questions, you can use the guide or directly contact the copyright librarian who can usually help. In general, UK copyright law permits anyone to copy from a literary, dramatic, musical, or artistic work for your own private study, providing you are accessing the original legally and your use is fair dealing. So printing, copying or scanning, ripping or downloading, screen capture, photography or filming, audio recording and transcribing are all regulated by copyright law. And even if you can't find a copyright symbol, a license statement or terms and conditions, it's likely that someone still owes the copyright in the work unless the creator died more than 70 years ago. So for example, student work, this means it's probably fair to photocopy a few pages from a library book but it's probably not fair to sell your photocopy to another student. It's probably fair to download an article from an e-journal to read at home, but probably not fair to share your copy on a social network. And it's probably fair to take a screenshot from a manufacturer's help manual for reference, but probably not fair to publish your own how-to guide using the illustrations from the manual. In the UK, it's legal for students to embed a fair amount of copyright material and coursework to share with classmates, tutors, and examiners. The work must be attributed. If you want to incorporate a poem, artwork, or photo, it's good practice to try to contact the creator or archive to ask for permission. Sometimes it's really nice to contact the creator. They're really excited about your work and they'll help you out. So copyright best practices. Use media labeled for use. So try Flickr and Google Image Search, search for Creative Commons. Use Creative Commons to license your own materials. Link to content rather than reproduce content, and this is mostly for web pages, not necessarily, obviously, your essays. Use only part of the media. See if you can get a grant to pay media creators for their hard work, and always credit the work. There's also copy fighting and copy left, which students may not be as familiar with. There are times when, arguably, so-called intellectual property rights shouldn't be adhered to. See what you think. For example, the Nefertiti hack. The bust of Nefertiti is currently being held in the Nuez Museum and was created in 1345. It was thought to have been created by Thutmose in Amarna as it was found in his workshop. It was found by an archaeological team led by Ludwig Borchardt in 1912, and Egypt has been demanding its repatriation since 1924, when the bust was first displayed to the public. There is some debate over it being smuggled out of the country, as it was not shown to Egyptian inspectors before export. It's an incredibly famous artifact, but when you visit it at the museum in Berlin, you are not allowed to take a photograph. There's a guard stationed in the room ensuring that you don't take photos and that you do not harm the bust. In 2016, two German artists, Nora Albadri and Jan Nikolai Nellis, claimed to have 3D scanned it, made the data available, and 3D printed it, then repatriated the copy to Cairo. It made international headlines. Stealing a 3D copy of a disputed artifact, printing it out, and repatriating it was an exciting development in a nearly century-old dispute. Unfortunately, it turned out to be a little bit of a hoax. This was revealed by some sleuthing. The artist claimed to have used Agisoft's PhotoScan, but this software is not good enough to produce such a high-quality 3D model. It looks like it might be a copy of a professional scan that was made in 2008 but it got headlines and raised awareness about the Nefertiti bust. It also raises some interesting intellectual property questions. Who owns the 3D scan of an artifact? Who should own it? Who is making money off of likenesses of ancient art? To summarize, we have copy fighting, so that's disputing copyrights that seem unreasonable or unjust. Copy left, which is granting the right to freely distribute and modify intellectual property and the rights remain intact in all future works, and Creative Commons, licenses designed to share according to the author's terms. These are all good licenses to look at and understand, especially if you work further in cultural heritage and archaeology.